Hello my friends and welcome back to your daily dose of Brood War. We've got Motive here in the top center versus Action down in the bottom left. We're going to get this this uh, chatter here translated for you and find out what Action has to say to Motive. Motive did not make it into the ASL this season. Unfortunately, not many Protoss players did, despite the map pool being pretty heavily weighted in favor of the Protoss, I feel. Maybe not in the qualifiers. I can't remember exactly which maps were used there. I think it was Dark Origin. I don't think Radeon was in there. There was a couple of others, but I don't think it was Troy or anything like that. A lot of these maps do really seem to favor Protoss, but... Only about seven Protoss players, I think, managed to make it into that lineup. So, a little bit of a sad showing from Protoss, despite them doing so well in the KCM this season. And having these really strong maps. But, Motive is a guy you would expect to make it into the ASL. He's been really strong coming up recently. Not somebody with a huge storied history, but... Most players have been around for quite some time. It's not like he's just popped out of nowhere. He's been grinding it up for a long time. He's tr starting to come into his own, but just didn't quite cut it this season. And now he's here on the ladder versus Action, who is someone who may be in the semifinal in the finals of this season. He's very strong and a good macro Zerg player to learn from if you're trying to learn how to play late game Zerg. He's not a player who's often going to be doing things like ling all inning or doing you know crazy builds where he's trying to bust you or anything mostly he's just trying to play it safe play a nice macro game and it's a great player to learn from he's very good at reacting to what the protoss is doing so that's what we're going to be taking a look at today i've been having a lot of trouble on the ladder guys today we did a lot of ladder we played a ton of games. We played for like seven hours straight. I had Shun in the booth helping me out, giving me some tips, trying to coach me, which honestly, I don't know if that even helped. It might have made things worse. I really couldn't tell you. Having someone chatting in your ear and talking the entire time is, um, it's rough. It's hard to say the least. And well, we tried to improve, but it feels like my brain just fell right out the back of my head this afternoon. So I'm going to do my best to keep it together here and give you guys a good cast for your daily dose. So thank you for being here, even though we've got the ASL out right now. Oh, coming to check out the channel. Really do appreciate it. Nice pull away there. Action. Keeping that drone alive and not losing even a single one. Now we've got another probe over here. It's rare that they send out two probes, actually. Sending two probes here seems a little bit crazy to me. And motive hiding the zealot. Oh man, this zealot. This is this is one thing that I don't like to do is send all my lings out. I like to keep my lings right here and send one ling across the map if you need it. He, he doesn't even need it here. But right now, motive is just about to run in with this zealot and he could get some good damage here. Action gonna be flaming. He's going to be pissed when he sees this, and he sees it now, but there's no way to stop this getting in and uh, being annoying at the very least. So this is a pain in the butt for action. He doesn't have his lair coming here. He went speed before lair, which is very unexpected and great information for Motive to find. He gets a kill inside the main. That's just what happens when you don't check for this zealot, when you do not Keep your lings back at home. You try to push them out on the map a little bit too quickly. Things can get out of control like this. And there it is. He's going to fly back around here. Can he get another couple of hits? Going to go to work on this drone. Just about getting that, but not quite able to. Guys, my chair is falling right now. I'm going to pop it back up here. There we go. Not sure what's going on with that. We got the probe here. Being chased around, quite a few links have been produced. Now, Lair actually in the natural. So he waited until the Zealot was inside the main before starting the Lair at the natural. Trying to hide his build just a tad here. As soon as the Ling speed has been seen, 
These four zealots are going to head back home with a cannon on the way. Should be nice and safe. That cannon very late here. So motive cutting a lot of corners. We're going to have the Stargate out soon to go and check. Find out about this layer here. But it's just pure macro from action. He's just pumping out drones like crazy. He's actually ahead in that worker count at this point. And he is just going to be pumping out a huge amount of drones here. Getting into his hatches. I expect we'll see six hatch hydra out of him. Very standard build. And great way to play. We've got the links out here. Checking for the zealot move out. With the link speed done, you can't really move out. Unless you leave two zealots in the wall. And then your move out's very weak. So he's going to wait for a second cannon here. Once you have the second cannon, it's a little bit safer to move out. It's still not safe, but it is a bit safer. Igel is then here. We've got plus one Corsair attack on the way. First Corsair going to come out. Six minutes. Six minute ten. Pretty normal timing here for Motive. Motive going to send that in the Hydralisk pathway. All the way along here. Making sure that there's no Hydras coming. It's not going to see any for now. And he will fly here over towards the natural. It's going to be like a four, five hatch so far. Hydra play. Not going for the Spire. Realizing that the Spire was going to be late. Because he did go for the Link Speed first. And... He was harassed in the early game. This is an adaptation that I really need to learn how to put into my own play a little bit better. Adapting on the fly, making sure that he has the tech available to stop the Corsair from dealing massive damage. And he is going to keep his overlords alive for the most part. Only this one overlord is unprotected out here on the map. And it's in a pretty safe location that should be found a little bit later. But by the time it is found, it won't matter too much. We'll have already gotten out. Our Hydras will have more Overlords here. So not getting Supply blocked right as the first Corsair comes out. That's really the important thing. And that's what Actions Men should do. Interesting position on this sixth hatch here. It's quite the gap in between. I wonder if he'll put another building here. Or what's the deal with this hatchery? Does that also mess up the gas? Make it go vertical here? I'm not sure. Have to keep an eye on that a little bit later. Corsairs here scouting everything out. Seeing everything. We've got Psionic Storm on the way. Just a four gateway play so far. With quite a lot of zealots being made. He looks like he wants to put on the pressure, but you know, with only two Corsairs, I think there might be a third one around somewhere. Just two Corsairs so far. With just two Corsairs, you can't really do a whole lot here. Actually going to see this army moving and I think he's just going to move back to Sim City. Well, only one group of Hydra out here, but that's enough to push back Motive for now. Motive going to have a bunch Templar popping out here and he's adding on more gateways. So he's not just going to go for one massive timing. He's going to try to pester action here with his Zealots. Try to take some fights, maybe pick off some Overlords if he can and slow him down a little bit. Although at this point... I think that's a losing battle. We're already at 41 drones here. So just about all the drones he could possibly want. 12 drones here on the mineral patches at the natural. 12 here in the main at the very least. Around 12 here too, about 11 at the third base. He's going to go ahead and take a fourth. And we should be seeing a hive coming up here pretty soon too. There should be a queen's nest coming down relatively soon with a big load of drones popping shortly here we don't even have a third base right now but i don't think that it's action's idea to contest that right now he's got lurker coming up i think we'll see a big lurker spread here on this high ground maybe a little bit of lurker over here on that side as well and him just going into a huge macro gameplay with a queen's nest coming up here shortly so motive how is he going to compete with this well he's got to get that third up soon and sneaking a probe out on the map to take a sneaky fourth base would be pretty strong right now, I think. He hasn't tried to do anything like that. And I think that if Action found that, he would shut it down pretty hard. But if you can go ahead and just start throwing down cannons somewhere. Like, get down here, start throwing down cannons here. And you get this base for free. 
that's when things get really out of control as a Zerg player. That, at least in my games, that's what usually ends up happening. So spreading lings everywhere, putting a ling here, a ling here, a ling here, a lings all over the place just to make sure that you're not getting crept on. You're not getting uh, a base stolen out from under your nose is very, very important. It could mean the difference between a win or a loss, whether you see those cannons before they warp in or not. Of course, you can just start to play wider, but if they take the base down here and put cannons in it, it gets really, really tough, really painful to try and do anything against that. And he's going to move out here with a pretty sizable army, two Templar only. Okay, two more behind that, so four Templar total. That's quite a lot of storm. Let's take a look. Yeah, quite a lot of storm here. Hyde just moving forward. I thought that was going to be for some snipes, but not taking the opportunity to snipe any Templar here. Action just sitting on high ground, waiting patiently for Motive to try to come to him. Throwing out some storms here. He's eating some pretty big storms, but this is kind of intentional. He wants to run up and bait the storm and then back away. Dodging those storms the best that he can. He's bringing the Overlord with that small group of Hydra as well, just in case there's an opportunity to perhaps snipe some of these observers. Now, this is where things get a little bit crazy. We're going to have to bring stuff from other areas. We're going to have to bring Lurker from other defensive positions to reinforce this spot here. Not allow Motive to break through this area. Otherwise, we could be in trouble. And Motive actually backing away, seeing that there are quite a few units being brought forward to assist. He's not going to try and break through that position. But a base over here at the center left might end up becoming... Uh, under threat here. Hydra, Lings moving over towards this third. He's going to lose this cannon, it looks like. Cannons do go down quite quickly. Some probes are going to be targeted. You can see here we started at about 56 probes. So how many are there going to be left at the end of this? Down to just 52. So about four probes ended up getting picked off there. And yeah, Hive is done. As you can see, Defiler Mound on the way. Great little counterattack here. Unfortunately, didn't manage to kill any Nexus. And this one right here is just about complete. All we need is cannons over here to start getting this one uh, set up. Fourth base set up here. And you can't really stay on four bases for too long. Four base versus four base here. Uh, as the Zerg player is going to get a little bit tough. But if you're, if you're on Hive deck with Defiler, it's not the worst thing in the world. You can win with Plague still. So, more Lurkers being brought up here. Action has quite a bit of gas banked up right now. He hasn't added on a huge amount of Ling, but he is, or a huge amount of Lurker, but he is bringing up a huge amount of Ling. Gonna bring some Lurker here to the side. The Ling are really starting to crunch through these Dragoon numbers, and the Zealots are being pulled way back to avoid the splash from those Zealots, or from, from the Lurker here. But the Dragoons are getting splattered and he's being overwhelmed. Wow, really great play from action. This is just, this is pure action right here, guys. Able to overwhelm this Protoss player. Beat him at his own game here. Motive trying to macro this game out, but action just being way, way better. How many hatches do we have here? Got two over here, we've got three over here, so it was six, seven, eight total hatches. Really impressive stuff. This is actually inspiring to me as a Zerg player to see this guy pull out such a macro win here against just a massive Protoss army. Overwhelming and destroying it already. He's got his upgrades rolling here. 2 1 is done. More melee upgrades are on the way here. So now I'm going to bother with uh, the spine attack anymore. Not with the ranged attack anymore. He's just going to focus here on melee upgrades because he knows those lings are going to be his key to victory. Those are what's going to help him to trade effectively against motive. Uh, aside from the uh, plagues here, it's going to be those cracklings and... He's starting to spread out over towards the center right now. Of course, there's moving around the side, but I think he'll be looking to take this base quite soon. Defiler making its way over here with a lot of links, a couple of lurkers, some hydra as well. 
Storms are going to come down on a lot of this. It's very hard to trade effectively against Cannon, Zealot, and High Templar with just Lurker and Ling and a little bit of Defiler, but he's going to do his best. Do, don't we have Plague here? I guess not. Oh, he's gone up here on high ground, flanking this army, not allowing it to, to retreat properly. And he is going to be able to get on top of this third base. This is a beautiful move from action. I did not expect this. I thought he was going to leverage the Lurkers on this side to actually go ahead and take another base down over here, but instead he's just trapped Motive's army on the low ground there. And he's going to use the opportunity to take out this base. And while the army is moving to try and save that. Oh, the Dark Storm. Just in time there. But actually with Archons here, he won't be able to get Lings underneath that Dark Storm to take advantage of it. A little bit unfortunate there for action. But he's just taking this game out of Motive's hands here. He's really overwhelming him with the multitasking. And he's dropped his probe count by quite a lot. So Motive's... Overall economy is not going to be looking that hot now. Defiler here at the front. There's way too many lurkers. So much Zerg just flowing forward here. There are no cannons over in this position. So he knows that he'll be safe. As long as he pushes into this area. He knows that he can break this. Hydra, Ling pushing forward. More lurkers being morphed and placed down. All the lurkers have been pulled from the defense by the way he is full on aggression right now because he knows that motive can do nothing but try to defend right now he's pushing forward killing off the cannons here there's quite the defense over at this base but this is his target right now action is trying to beast his way through this area more lurkers popping out a plague finally going down that's gonna ruin these zealots whole career man look at him he is just out of this gg action overwhelming godlike macro man that was insane the positioning as well to bring the lurkers up to high ground and being so aggressive with the defensive lurkers right look we don't have anything wasted here for action nothing is being wasted remember he had all these lurkers here he had all these lurkers up here as well and then eventually he moved them over to here all every single one of those was brought forward this is so hard to do he's only got 1500 minerals i can't believe he doesn't have this gas actually i almost think this is an oversight but i'm not sure i feel like you want this gas as soon as possible so that you can pump out more lurker and hydra because you're you're building defiler you've got three gas with three gas you can afford hydra lurker and a whole bunch of ling but once you start to mix in Defiler, I feel like you you start to not be able to afford the, the, the Lurkers anymore. So having this fourth gas means you can really start to pump out Lurker, Defiler, Ling. And push the issue. But wow, action just going completely, completely gung-ho here. As soon as he got his Defiler, he turns on the aggression... And Motive just cannot hang, even on four bases. He just was a little bit too spread out. He got forced in each different direction, outmaneuvered by action. This is inspiring, guys, to me. Truly inspiring. I've played so much ladder today, but I actually feel like even playing more at this point. It's an addiction, guys, I know, but... This is not my addiction. This is your addiction. Thank you for joining me for your daily dose of Brood War. And I'll see you tomorrow.